Hi, my name is Olivia Douglas. I'm from this and that with Olivia.com. I'm based out of Maryland. How are you today? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. I'm Lynn. Nice to meet Hi, you. great to meet you. Thanks for taking the time to chat with me today. Um, Sure. I have three children. They are 10, almost four and almost two. Um, and so Transformers has been kind of something my 10 year old, especially my son loves, you Oh, know, great. with to that age where they want to play with all the toys and, you know, dress up like for Halloween and stuff like that. So I was super excited to have this opportunity to chat with you today Fabulous. about your experience. Yeah, it's pretty neat to see it kind of come full circle because, you know, we have the live action movie and and Transformers has kind of evolved over like my lifetime. And so it's really neat to see it come full circle there. So, again, I appreciate your time today. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So what do you enjoy most about your job as an editor? Oh, wow. Um, I guess working with the director and um, helping a story evolve over, especially in animation, the years that it takes to make a, a full feature film and uh, track the story over time. Um, it's, I mean, it's great because you are very, very involved with just the whole storytelling element, not just the technical side of it. So I love it. I'm sure it's nice to see something from start to finish, if you will, and be able to, you know, watch that story all the way through, right? Yeah. And, and stories do evolve. It's because we are working in animation and it starts with a script and then goes into storyboards and it's all temporary dialogue and sound effects and music. It can evolve, you know, and it, the difference in live action is they have a script and then they shoot it. So you're working with those elements in live action, but you, you can't like create new shots out of the blue. You know, they could go do reshoots or whatever, but it's pretty much that's your story. And then you're shaping and molding that. Um, this it, sometimes for the worst too, <laughs> sometimes it can evolve and you don't always want it to. You know? <laughs> so that, that happens too in an animated film. Um, you know, like part of my job is things like, um, you know, a year could go by and we're working on different versions of the movie and we're addressing some notes in the beginning going, oh, you know, it's, it's feeling too young. Let's mature it up or whatever it is. Um, and then there might be jokes and stuff. And then it's like, everybody loves a joke in the first couple of screenings, but then by screening four, five or six, they may be like, hmm, can we reevaluate that? And then you're, you're like, no, no, no. Remember a year ago, it was perfect. You loved it. You laughed. So that's part of my job too, is like clinging to the stuff that works as best you can, if it's supporting the overall story. So. That sounds like a lot of fun. And that was kind of leads into my next question. I'm assuming there's sometimes creative differences with directors and producers along the editing phase, just like you were saying, where, you know, three shoots or whatever, three edits, and you're like, hey, that joke was really funny. So that's, that's sort of how you handle those differences that you can sometimes have with them. Yeah, I mean, usually that's not um, my place to necessarily um, choose or how, you know, what notes to, because a lot of it, you'll have a lot of notes and sometimes um, notes will be very, very warranted, but they don't always have the solution, right? And then you have to kind of step back with the director and the other filmmaking crew and the writers and everybody and they they evaluate like, okay, They said this, this, and this about the opening area, like was there confusion or whatever it was. Um, and what we need to evaluate is well, why are they feeling that is, and sometimes it could be in the editing. It could be, is it going too fast and they miss something or is, is it overshadowed by a beat right after that beat, you know? Um, and then other times it's like, it, it might need a whole rewrite and like, okay, let's, uh, is our opening of the movie the best opening we can have to represent our characters and make people understand this world we're in, like we're on a new planet in a Transformers world we've never been a part of, right? Um, so things like that. So that, that's, you know, that's part of the, the overall team doing that and um, going through the notes. And then sometimes the solutions might be a little different. So we'll put something up and then we like cross our fingers and hope it's working. But the best way to know if it's working or not is to show it to new fresh eyes who weren't a part of the everyday process, which might be the execs or an audience or, um, you know, other crew members who haven't seen it. So, and then that's, that's, it just, that's the best way to... <laughs> understand if your movie's holding true to what the goal is you know 
I'm sure you have to have that vision of how, you know, something's going to come together as you're editing and everybody together is like, Hey, this is how the story's going to go. These other characters are going to be represented. So like, I personally, my husband's a visionary in that instance. Right. And yeah. I'm like, can you just do it? And then I'll see what it looks like. And then I'll determine, <laughs> you know, and so you have that creative bone in your body that I certainly don't have to be that's able big. to see, kind of see the future, if you will. So that that's awesome. Yeah. And what you're saying is so true. Like when you can read something on pages and you can be like, oh, I love it on the pages. But then sometimes when it gets on the screen, it can play very differently and sometimes for the better, sometimes not for the better. So it just then you have to figure out, like, why was it working here and not working here? Or why was it not working there? And we made it work on the screen. So, you know, it's just it's it's part of the process of the story for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, transfer, trans, oh my gosh, transforming, I guess transferring over is what I was trying to say to the Transformers movie, uh, you know, through the editing process, do you feel like there was an overall message or theme that you want viewers to garner from Transformers 1? Um, for the movie itself? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think it it is that theme and th that's what we really, really wanted to bring to this movie was the emotion the origin story following characters that were very close friends like brothers and then you know what caused them in their their world of deception that they learned about caused them to go in entirely different directions and how they handled it causing their friendship to end um so we we did want that to land and i i think we were successful at that and i think it's um you know, the theme is just um, what is important, right? And, you know, friendships and family are important. And I guess, I guess I have to say like doing the right thing. Like sometimes the way people handle situations or our characters in our movie aren't always the best way to handle situations. And, and, and it's, I don't know if we have the, the answer to always how to handle things, but it, it's good to think about it and think about what's important. So I hope people go away with that, you know, doing the right thing is really the, the answer, I guess. That's awesome. I love that. And then one final question for you today is what would you recommend or what would you give as advice to people that are looking to come up as, you know, kind of an editor in the animation world or any type of getting wow. into that filmmaking process? Um, you know, I when I started out, I did film school and I didn't know I was going to eventually focus in editorial. And I, I, I liked editorial in film school, but I that's where I landed, right? But it's pretty much I didn't know I was going to edit animation. I guess I didn't know it. And there was such a job right, when you go to film school. So I'd say almost any um, area of the filmmaking world, whether you want to be a writer, a director, an editor in the art department, whatever it is, you need to be aware that there's a world of animation, the news, music videos, made for TV, documentaries, feature films. So I think be open to all the different things that could exist within what you want to focus on and just start doing it, you know? So whether you're cutting indie films or student projects or trying to work at a studio as a production assistant and they go, oh, do you want to be in the art department or do you want to be in this department or the edit department? Go say, I want to be in the edit department. And, you know, that's, that's the best way to learn. And then now with the whole bunch of home platforms, just start editing stuff and volunteering to edit stuff. So you start to build your own resume and your own um, way of working with people and learning all the different, because I, I love to cut indie stuff too. And shorts, you know, I mean, for no money, just because it's, it's a, um, you know, it, it you learn something new every time you work on any project. And in Transformers, I learned a ton of new stuff because it was a totally new world versus some of the comedy I've done in the past, you know, so it was a, it's a nice balance to learn and um, bring what you can to where, whatever you're working on and learn from it. So that's the advice, I think. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. That was lovely talking to you.